hit it, Phil. Ba, da, 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 da. Can it be the breeze that fills the trees with rare and magic perfume? Oh, no. <laughs> it isn't the breeze. It's Jackson time. La, da, da, da. Recorder. Well, hello again. This is Buck Benny speaking. Uh, we're joined with my friend John Henderson, Kathy oh. Fuller Seeley. And again, we are blessed to have Eddie Anderson Jr., the son of Rochester, uh, on on our show. And, and we love this. So I try and pull out episodes that are more uh, Rochester centric when we're going to have Eddie on here. And, and so we can talk about that a little bit. But he also, I mean, Eddie, right before he got on, I mean, he was talking about Don Wilson and 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 what, how funny he thought he was in this episode. So certainly, Eddie, you can comment on anything you want. You don't always have to comment yeah. on just your dad or anything. I love Don Wilson. Like that's all we can do. Yeah. Um, but uh, this episode is how Jack met Rochester. It's one of the live episodes. I think it's from '54. Is that kind of right? Do you guys remember? It's '56, 56 right? January '56. Okay. So uh, that's interesting. January '56. So this was just two years a month. before me, man. Well, no, but it was just. A, I'm just thinking. It was. Yeah, it was a month before the episode we just presented, which was a filmed one, that seems kind of light years ahead of this one if i think about the way the production goes and everything this really feels like one of the early sort of live ones in a way whereas that one feels so polished and everything it's just funny that they were a month apart so anyway interesting so uh anyway let's let's get into this one um and i'll i'll have uh let's have john start us out john um anything you want to point out in this episode that yeah, I thought it was a fun episode. It's a live episode, which is always very interesting because there's a certain way that they do everything where it's the curtain and then the curtain literally goes up and there's the scene on the train. Mm -hmm. And it's, I also think it's interesting, like historically, because we don't travel by train like that, certainly yeah. not regular everyday traveling. So like the way that people would travel on the train and they literally would change the these like bunk beds into like seating areas i thought that was such an interesting historical little cap you know snapshot yeah, yeah. And, well, uh, sure. and and the fact that jack even mentions because even they're portraying of course a train trip that supposedly happened 20 years earlier or right years earlier or something like that and so he has to describe to the audience again even the audience in 1956 what it was like and that at that point in time it took you what, what did he say he says like three or four days to go across the united states or something and yeah. so you'd sleep on the train and everything and to get people to understand that because even in that time in 56 if you had to go across country most people are flying and things by then and, and the trains though still in in use are used less than they were previously yeah but yeah i, I thought that was interesting too that just that, that uh factual information that ties into this yeah um, i'm always interested in these little history things and another yeah. reference that uh they have in the episode well, that's why i have you here john <laughs> well, well, well i'll give it to you then uh the wedding of prince rainier of is it rainier of uh, morocco of yes. course he was going to be married to grace kelly the movie actress yes so i thought that was an interesting reference. and it gets mentioned yeah for sure yeah, yeah. great uh <laughs> you know it's so funny to have don wilson uh, which you sort of half mentioned, and yeah. how they, how, <laughs> I don't know how much, what, we're getting into spoilers, but the, oh, yeah. I thought it's so funny the way they slowly reveal, oh, Jack's not alone in there, and then, oh, yeah. hey, be, you can't come out because you're supposed to, we only paid for an under 12 ticket, and then when they yeah. pi finally open it up, and he's in that, like, little boy outfit, yeah. it's yes. just hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that whole that Crowley. And I think Rochester that it's like that he's twelve. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not working, man. Even you're like, you're, you're like, I'm not working. I'm, yeah. I'm not that stupid. And, <laughs> and even that cross, like today, that would be a little suspect. You know, you were that. That was a tough one. Yeah, yeah. they weren't scared of any of that. It no, ended up being no. three people in there. If you really want to talk about it, yeah, no. <laughs> was that Dennis Day again? <laughs> Dennis Day popped his head out later. Right. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a great a way of recite of the writers looking back into Jack's old scripts and recycling a joke that had been a radio joke years before. They had way back in the 40s, 
sometime they'd done one of these traveling across country and trying to save money and but the reveal was all had to done audio about jack and his birth and then you hear like i think dennis and then when you hear it's done and then you just have to imagine the right. three of them crammed right. into one upper birth yeah. right. so it was right. great for them to do it the first joke of uh, uh, for the ear and then this this way for the eye and, yeah to see it visually was uh that was well, and it's so was funny huge. with how these shows work, how I'm getting used to them as we're watching the Jack Benny shows and realizing what we get sometimes. Sometimes when he has a guest on, he'll he'll do the guest part. So he's playing around with the guest and talking to her at the beginning. And then they need some filler for the rest of the show. And so often they at that point, somebody, I assume in the writer's room goes, Oh, let's go grab this bit that we did on the radio show and bring it in. So you often are going to get this modern, new sort of banter with a guest, followed by a throwback to the to the radio show. And so I'm always looking forward to that and going, "Oh, cool! We're going to get. <laughs> we're probably going to get something that 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 we, for us. We've listened to the radio show so much that whenever they take something from that and put it on." television we're like oh that makes it extra interesting it doesn't always work that great sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but it's always interesting for us but eddie you were going to say something go ahead oh no that whole thing about like john was talking about that that imagery was powerful because yes. it, it caught me by surprise it really did when it pulled the curtain i was like, <laughs> that, like wow <laughs> not only that he was dressed like a kid he's had some yep. head curl garment on or something yeah 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 yeah. little cap and everything and the fact that john what you said it even allowed me to see how the trains were set up i had no idea and that that was very educational because i didn't i think i've ridden on a train once or twice but just to see how those trains would uh convert or you know into beds and yeah I, i had no idea made me want to ride on a train man. i know i was like i agree no, it, yeah. and you just don't see that stuff. I wish, you know, there was more that you that you could see how things used to be or how they how they would. Yeah. Happen. And so this kind of gives you insight. And you go, oh, that's how it was all laid out. I always wanted like to so talk about sleeping in a berth and what what are they talking about on yeah. a. Right. And the same yeah. thing on ships. They, they, you know, they would talk about it. You have your how did they work that out? I mean, I know how ships look like now, but how do they back in the '30s and the '20s and things look like? So, yeah, I think it's more was, than three hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> not no train, nothing. I mean, three hours is a long time. A long time. 30 seconds is a long time for a video right now. Yeah. You get it? That's yeah. It. Tension span is yep. gone. Yeah. 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 What, what did you think about the part, Eddie? Uh, your, your dad's part in this where it shows him uh, working on the train. Uh, oh, I loved it. I yeah. loved it because he, uh, the way they wrote that in, the fact that he did catch too many people in that particular, but yes. he still was not running to tell. He didn't run and tell. Right. He still, you know, he told him, he said, look, uh, you're going to make me lose my job. I'm willing to work with you. Yeah. But I'm just going to let you know. He didn't ask for a favor, didn't ask for a tip, but he said, you know, I, I'm not going to tell. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna make me lose my job, you know. And then Jack Benny, what he did was was monumental, and that's I think that's how things work, right? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly the the backstory is the same story in in a sort of way. You get what I mean? Let me yeah. let me take a took the risk. Yep, took the risk, and that keeps coming up. So and it's interesting how it, how it kind of took because we we just. Uh, just so my listeners and viewers know, we sure. just looked at the very first episode that uh, Eddie Anderson was ever on from 1937 mm-hmm. of the radio show. And he was played a train porter. So that's the same. But they sort of combined, he, he, he was at train porter for a while and then he appeared on other episodes and finally he turned into the Rochester character later mm-hmm. on. It's three, this is of course over three months. In this, they're sort of condensing it down and going, he, he went from the train porter to being fired by the end of this episode and Jack hiring him and, and becoming 
what we would know as the Rochester character, which is right. fairly much what happened. They just streamlined it a little bit. And, well, and yeah. Daryl, one thing that fascinates me is that none of those shows were, you know, I mean, it's, it's 20 years later. Yes. And none of these shows were ever rerun. No. And no one, you know, so um, the show is having to go from a nostalgic memory. Uh, but that amazes me that they think that their audience would care and that they'd be so sentimental. This reminds me so much of how Jack met Mary with that sort of same kind of level of affection. We didn't see a couple of weeks ago, you had us play that how Jack, Jack met Dennis. And that one was done for bizarre laughs in a Chinese restaurant, not sort of the way it was. And they right. didn't, you know, right. so as I said, I, I love how the Benny show over the years uh, rewards its fans yes. for loving the characters and loving the shows by going back to these off these backstories. Yeah. Well, this is one of the, this has got to be one of the all time uh, biggest callbacks they've ever had. I mean, at least with Mary, her working at the May Company, they did jokes about it for right, all the time. And so, so it would be very easy for an audience, it would be hard for an audience if you're a fan of Jack at all to not realize yeah. that she started out of the May Company. And when they show that that's how he met her, that's great. With, it's not like with Rochester that they mentioned, oh, remember when I met you and you were a train porter and, right. and jokes about They hadn't done that. So right. really, so this, is, this is saying... Okay, we hope you remember this from 20 years yeah. ago. 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's like, <laughs> you know, okay. the, the Jack Benny show doesn't usually care that much about continuity, but yeah. when there's something that they do sort of, you know, explain, yeah. I think that it's, it's interesting. Go ahead, Kathy. Oh, oh, the gap would be that it was constantly mentioned in um, radio fan stuff about yeah. Eddie Anderson, yeah. every profile and story of him. So it was not in the show, but again, rewarding fans. Because if you read any of the fan or fan magazine stories, you would know that they always said his first role was as a train port. You know what I mean? Right. So they yeah. filled it in. So but, it's an interesting uh, way to sort of bridge that gap from like... Yeah. They never said his name wasn't Rochester when he was a train porter. So it is Rochester. And this is yeah, how he right. became Jack's valet. I think that's so fun. And it's fun yeah, to have. Yeah, true. They never gave him a name. They just called him Red Cap, I think, yeah, the whole yeah. time in that first episode. Yeah. It, it's fun to have this opportunity where Rochester doesn't know Jack yet. And so they can do a gag like he's waiting for a tip. And it ends up being the button. Oh, yeah. I guess he's cheap. You know, things like that. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It, it, it's always neat when you go back and retcon in or whatever the 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 experience of them first meeting and things. So I mean, that was delightful. That how how that whole interaction between Jack and yeah, or Jack or the was. the funny little wordplay about the names of cities and his name being Rochester. Yes, and then the hilarious ending and his delivery is just so funny, where he says like Pittsburgh. That's a man. Name. <laughs> like, as if everybody knows that Pittsburgh is a man's name. That's so funny. Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, there were certain things. And then, of course, the whole, I didn't get even why they needed it or why they had it. The whole Indian yeah, thing, they, they were coming to how and, and that whole thing. Yeah, no, well, well, that was another awkward uh, callback to the fact that oftentimes when they'd be on the train and going through Albuquerque, uh, 20 years ago they used to mention that there'd be indian souvenir pottery for sale but having the indian walk through no that was kind of a uh, uh, lame but as i said they 20 years before they used to work it into the description right. of oh we're going through albuquerque that's where and we're it's gonna... just now modern audience look at it it feels culturally insensitive yeah. but of course at the time i mean you get we always got to look at it and, and take time into perspective because yeah. It's like they weren't trying to do that, um, but it just, it just it just kind of falls flat. So go ahead, yeah. John. I'm curious, Eddie, you, because your father was so prolific, he did tons of movies. There's tons of episodes of The Jack Benny Show, both in radio and television. I'm curious, like, how much of his material have you seen? When did you start getting into it? And like, especially with radio, it, it wasn't on when you were a kid. How much have you heard, and like, when did you start listening? Uh, I missed a lot of the radio stuff. I did. Uh, just the recent last five, six years, maybe, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, went into the radio stuff. As far as the television shows, I grew up with the Jack Benny show. I literally did. I, it was, uh, remember, television was probably one of the first babysitters. <laughs> I mean, we, you know that. I mean, that's where it started. So right. there weren't a lot of stations in 1958. There were about four or five, maybe. So the Jack Benny show, I mean, I would see it often. I would see it so often, I would actually wanted to see it with my father, which he refused to watch it. He wouldn't watch it. He wouldn't watch it with me. But I mean, my sister. Before, he didn't like to watch himself. He didn't want to like to watch himself and nothing. So Pops had a little weird thing going on. I was like, let him have that. You get it? That's just yeah. one thing. But yes, I did. I saw a lot of episodes. Yeah, I've probably seen all of them, really. Right. I just probably don't remember. But right. I, yeah, I was always tuned in to Gone with the Wind, Cabin in the Sky, all the big ones, Topper One, Topper Two. Yeah, I've all seen them more than once. You know, uh, yeah. Well, and that's so, such a gift for you that yeah. like, my dad's 94. And so yeah. hopefully he'll be here for a number of years. Wow. Who knows? And, and, uh, Lately, I've started going over and having conversations with him about the past and about what it was like growing up and things. And, I, and I've been recording those um, so that I have that to listen to in the future. Because I, I won't, I mean, I'll have some photographs and I'm maybe in like videos, like an oral eight millimeter videos, you might get a like, it's always focused on the kids. And so maybe dad's walking across the screen at some point. So you see him walk across or you see him holding some one of the kids in his lap or something for a minute, but that's all you see. And so when my dad's gone, I won't have a lot. I mean, I'll have some pictures, like I say, and I'll have this audio stuff that now I've recorded, which is going to be wonderful, a wonderful yeah, comfort to me. But the fact that you and anyone who has a, a father that's a actor or mother that's an actress or whatever, but you have all this preserved things where you could see him at all these different stages of his of his age. You get to see him as a young man. You get to see him uh, as as he was when. Well, certainly the the later seasons of the Jack Benny show, you would have been like six, seven years old or something. Mm-hmm. So you so you're like, oh yeah, I remember when Dad looked like that when I was a kid yeah. and things yeah. a little bit. Absolutely. So so yeah. I think that that would be a Unless, wonderful. I would think a wonderful blessing and a treasure. It is. It truly yeah. is. Absolutely. It's, uh, I don't, there are no words that kind of express the, the gratitude yeah. that you get by uh, having that thing that you spoke of in your life. You get what I mean? To, yeah. to, to, to see the t- total dynamics, not only just, uh, just seeing them on television, but the impact too. All of those things that are concentrated in this whole Eddie Anderson realm, this this sphere. It, yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, right. we could sit here and talk, uh, do a whole different show on that alone. You get it? <laughs> oh, you probably my. will. But yeah, you. and that would be interesting. I would love to, to try to do something like that. Uh, yeah. So, in answer to your question, uh, amazing, yeah. totally amazing. Uh, That's. I'm so happy you feel that way. I mean, yeah, thank you. I mean, that's the one thing. I mean, everybody mentioned uh, all the comments and everything from from the recreation that people have seen, mm-hmm. are just hearing you talk about your dad and the caring that you have and the the things you've done, like trying to preserve his, the historical home mm-hmm. that 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 your dad had, and uh, people are just um, very touched by 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 that and 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 that's what you hope right you hope yeah. you're going to not be one of those kids that are like oh dad was horrible and he never spent any time with me and, yeah. and now i hate him and you know i'm going to write a yeah. book about how how terrible the guy was yeah you know you hope that that's not going to be the case you realize right. in hollywood sometimes that is the case right. but in your case that's yeah, not i have, a, I have case, a, it's a wonderful story, story. Yeah. i have a father that was so much of a human being, it was, uh, it's kind of scary because you don't find that. You, you want it, you, you crave when you meet certain people because you've been exposed 
to an entirely different level of, of, of spirit. So I find myself giving people too much credit too soon. You understand what I mean? Only to find out the character is tainted. Yeah. There's a whole lot of stuff. But being around and being raised with such a, a man of, of principle, you automatically, you crave that. You, you want that kind of thing. But there's not a lot of it in this world. You know what I mean? You see it with war and everything going on. You just don't have that. So I'm very fortunate, very grateful to have experienced that. Do I don't have so much expectations anymore yeah. for that thing that I said I'm looking for. It. I, I'm embracing that I had the opportunity and I'm thankful that I was able to do that for 19 years. So yeah. that's huge. That's huge. Yes. Yeah, that was sure. it. That's great. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, that is a great place for us to probably end this episode, unless anyone has anything else to add. Kathy, you have anything else you want to mention or anything? No, or thank good? you. Thank you so much for this. Yeah. yeah what have, what have, I got to tell you, Eddie, whenever you stop by and we have these conversations, I just, I'm so thankful for the depth you bring to them for the, you know, it just never feels like you're phoning it in. It always feels like you're here and you're really sharing what it was like to know your dad to to honor and you honor him and his memory and um you honor us just by being here and, and sharing yeah, some insights yeah. with us so thank you again so much and, and i bless you guys as well <laughs> okay it wouldn't work without you guys trust me yeah <laughs> the team the it's team. a team it's a team yeah a team. and uh like i say you know I'll keep sending you invitations to all the yeah. people. Anytime you you feel like, hey, I got a Saturday morning free, I'll stop right. by. I stop by. It's, I we'd love it. to have you. So yeah. thank, thank, thank you. you. Enjoy the episode. Uh, an interesting episode for sure of yeah. how Jack met Rochester and a rare episode that it's not in the syndication package for a long time. I never saw it. It's uh, someone posted on YouTube you know, maybe five years ago. And that's the first time I'd ever heard of it or saw it. And, and, oh, and it's the last one in our series of how Jack met whoever we had, how Jack met Dennis and how Jack met Mary and how Jack met George uh, Burns. And now we finish the series with how Jack met Rochester. I just wanted to hold this one back until we could get Eddie here. Cause I just, I, I just thought it was an important enough episode that we wanted Eddie's. Yeah. You, you, you got me, uh, Darryl, you stayed on it. Yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like it was, it was being a little play. bit of a nuisance, but yeah, I was I just trying Darryl to say. Does not play. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I stick on it, man. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Have a, have a great week. From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with his special guest, Sarah Churchill, presented by Lucky Strike. Light up, Lucky, it's light up time. Be happy, go lucky, it's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up, Lucky Strike, relax. It's light up time. There's a time and a place for everything. And the right time for a lucky is any time you want to enjoy a great cigarette. And the right place for a lucky is wherever you happen to be at the time. You'll always enjoy luckies because luckies taste better. Lucky Strike is made of fine, naturally good tasting tobacco. And it's toasted to taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, sir. Luckies taste better. Anytime, anywhere. So right now, light up a Lucky. It's light up time. Enjoy the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Well, here it is, the end of January, and I'll bet that all of you people, or most of you, have, have been doing just what I've done. I mean, every time you 
you make out a check, you still put last year's date on it. You know, 1955. Matter of fact, yesterday was the first time that I put 1956 on a check. That was the exact price of a suit that I bought. <laughs> 1956. It, it, it was the full price. I mean, there were no, there were no sales tax or anything because they don't have that down in Tijuana. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm a sucker for imported things. <laughs> but um, uh, this suit, of course, you get the most terrific bargains in Tijuana that you've ever heard of. This suit that I bought was made out of a Toreador's cape. <laughs> Wonderful suit. It had three buttons and four buttonholes. <laughs> that extra hole is where the bull got him. <laughs> well, so much for international trade. And um, now, ladies and gentlemen, to change the subject, and I'm sure I have your permission, I, um, in a few weeks from now, I'm going to England to film some television shows that are going to be done over here, going to be shown here, you see. And it's the first time that I've ever been uh, to England to do TV shows. I've played there many, many times at the London uh, Palladium. And, you know, I found out one thing, that when you play the Palladium in London, and I've been there many, many times, that you have to be aggressive over there, not only on the stage, but in your social activities, too. And I'm not. Like, for instance, what I mean is, like, when Danny Kaye plays in London, he, he gets to meet all the dignitaries and the members of Parliament, and, uh, oh, he meets the royal family, and they come to see him, and he's invited to Buckingham Palace. And, I don't know, when Bob Hope plays there, he has lunch with the Duke of Edinburgh, and, I don't know, these things never seem to happen to me. They, they almost happen. Almost, but not quite. Well, I'll tell you something you won't believe. The last time I played London, I was invited to have dinner at number nine Downing Street. <laughs> but when I'm there, of course, doing my TV shows, I'm going to have guest stars, more than one of my stars. One of my guests is going to be that very, very talented actress and the lovely daughter of Sir Winston Churchill. And she happens to be here today, and I'd like you to meet her, Miss Sarah Churchill. I want to tell you how very, very happy I am that you're going to be on my shows with me in London, and I hated to make you come down here, but I did want my audience to see you. Well, you know? Jack, you know, it's my pleasure, and I've, I've had such fun here today because everybody's been so nice to me. Oh, especially the fellow who insisted on buying me lunch. Uh. Now, there's a nice chap for you. Stout fellow. <laughs> Stout fellow. I love those, I love those British expressions, you know? <laughs> Oh, well, I didn't mean it to be. I was just referring to Don Wilson. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You mean 16 tons. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell me, Sarah, uh, how does your father feel about your theatrical career? I mean, does he, uh, does he approve? Well, yes, I think so. Well, anyway, he's always encouraged me every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Of course, it wasn't easy in the beginning because I only played such small parts and only occasionally, but... Of course, in the last few years here, I've had some wonderful acting roles on the television and the stage. Yes, yes, and now you're going to be a guest on, in London on my television show, huh? Yes. My, my father wrote me the nicest note when he found out about it. Really? What did he say? Never has so much been sacrificed for so little. <laughs> I must say, your daddy certainly has a quick mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's really very, very active. Oh, yes, he is. He really is. He's an enormous enthusiasm for life. He doesn't, 
doesn't matter what he's doing, whether he's painting or writing or walking around the farm, he's always busy. And you know, I think that that's the reason he stays so young. Well, that's wonderful, really. Yes. By the way, what is your formula, Jack, for keeping young? I lie a little. <laughs> But, Sarah, you don't have to be active, you see, doing that. Sarah, uh, I want to tell you again how very glad I am you're going to be with me in London. Oh, yes, I, I'm very excited about it. You know, I remember our first meeting in England. It was in Trafalgar Square, and you were telling me about your appearance at the Palladium and how you were such a sensation and, and such a terrific hit <laughs> that they wanted to hold you over for an extra two weeks. Funny, strange, I, I don't remember our being introduced. Oh, we weren't. You were just stopping people at random. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I recall. Yes. Yes. And, then, and then by some strange coincidence, I saw you again the very next evening. My father and I were looking out of the window, and we saw you going into the house next door. You know, number nine, Downing Street. <laughs> That's right. I, I was there for dinner. Did you know the people? Oh, yes, very well. They were our help. <laughs> well, they were certainly wonderful to me. <laughs> now, Sarah, you know, when you and I were discussing doing our shows uh, over in London, you were, now that they have TV commercials over there, you were explaining to me, and rightly so, that uh, these commercials should be adapted so that they fit English audiences. You remember that? Yes, that's right. Well, I gave it a lot of thought, and I prepared a number that I think might be good for an English audience, and I want you to see it. Will you? Oh, I'd love I, I prepared it with the Sportsman Quartet, you oh, know, oh, oh, and we'll stand over there and watch it. Huh? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sportsman. Are fictitious by intention And should there be similarity they show To any living dog or English man you know It's purely coincidentally, by Jove Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun The Japanese don't care to, the Chinese wouldn't dare to the Hindus and Argentines sleep soundly from 12 to 1. But Englishmen detest a siesta. In the Philippines, they have lovely screens to protect you from the glare. In the Malay states, they have hats like plates which the Britishers won't wear. At 12 noon, the natives swoon and no further work is done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Yes, mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The toughest Burmese bandit could never understand it. In Hong Kong, they strike the gong and fire off a noonday gun to reprimand each inmate who's in late. In a mangrove swamp for the python's romp, there's peace from 12 to 2. Even caribous lie around and snooze, but there's nothing else to do. In Bengal, to move that all is seldom if ever done. But men, dogs, and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Englishmen go out in the midday sun. But that's enough of joking. It's time to mention smoking. From Times Square to Piccadilly, Lucky's a smoke they like. It comes from Carolina. It's finer. Quite right. For the best smoke yet in a cigarette, it's the same the whole world over. The one they like is a lucky strike from Nottingham to Dover. It's Lucky's for better taste. It's smooth as a smoke can be. So pop on an LSMFT. Sarah, do you think that that 
uh, commercial would appeal to our English viewers? Huh? Well, I, I don't really know, Jack. So few of our mad dogs have television. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can change it after we get over there a little bit. Huh? By the way, just who are you taking with you to England? Well, I'll take probably Don Wilson and Mary and, you know, some of my cast and then some of my musicians like Charlie Bagby and Frank Remley oh, over there. Yes, there's something I wanted to ask you. I, I hear you refer so often to Frank Remley. Uh, is it true? I mean, does he really imbibe as much as you say? Imbibe? <laughs> yes. I know what it means. I know what it means. <laughs> but I think imbibe is too nice a word <laughs> to use, you know, when you're referring to someone who has spent two thirds of his life on his hands and knees. <laughs> you see, Frank Remley, when he was six months old, he learned how to crawl, and that was it. <laughs> Let's see, who else am I taking over? Well, of course, Dennis Day probably be with me in Rochester. Oh, yes, that was the other thing I wanted to ask uh, you. I mean, how, how long has Rochester been with you? With me? Well, I'd say about 18 years. 18 years? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, it's very popular in England, and, and a lot of people there have often wondered just how it was that you met him. I mean, how did he start to go to work for you? Well, Sarah, that's quite an interesting story. Uh, would you like to hear it? Oh, yes. Well, about 18 years ago, I was on a train coming from Los Angeles, or from Chicago, rather, to Los Angeles. In those days, it took about four days and three nights, you see. And it was the morning of the day that we arrived in Los Angeles. Central Avenue Stud. Central Avenue Stud? Yeah. What kind of game is that? Everything is wild but the three of hearts. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, once I had seven aces and lost. Henry, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. you look a little tired. Yeah, you'd be tired, too, if you had kids running up and down the aisle of your car for three days. Well, I haven't got kids, but I got a man in upper six that really keeps me hopping. <laughs> Every time I turn around... Porter! 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 He's over again. I'll be right back. Okay. Yes, sir? Uh, Porter, did you send out those telegrams like I asked you to? Oh, oh yes, sir. Good. And did you, did you shine my shoes? Yes, sir. Fine. Here we are, right here. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Did you get me the morning paper? Yes, sir. Right in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Porter. Porter, wait a minute. I'm, yeah, I'm, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Just, just a minute. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Sew that button on this coat. <laughs> What do you want this time? You want me to sew this button on his coat? <laughs> That's all right. Maybe when we get off the train, he'll give you a nice gratuity. Gratuity? Yeah, that means... Oh, I know what it means, but that's too nice a word to waste on a man who left an asparagus tip for a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, Mr. Billy's the dilly. Yeah, I guess so. You should have seen him at that stopover back in Albuquerque. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho. man, you should have seen him. It was real an education to have seen him bargaining with the Indians over those blankets. Oh, yeah? Did he uh, buy any of them? Buy? He was selling. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, where did he get the blankets? In Albuquerque. He'd buy on one side the train and sell on the other. <laughs> oh, man, what a smooth operator. He had those Indians believing he was Chief Sitting Bull. <laughs> All right, boys, break it up. I don't mind little cards, but I just came through your car, Henry, and the aisles are a mess. Okay, sir, I'll get at it right away. 
Rochester, can't you do something about Upper Six? I noticed the curtain's been closed since we pulled out of Chicago. Well, that's Mr. Benny's birth, and he told me to keep the curtains closed. Oh, he told you? I thought it was a request from the other passengers. <laughs> anyway, he's not in charge of this car. You are. Now, see that that berth is made up. We're yeah. almost in Los Angeles. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. First call for lunch. <laughs> First call for lunch. First call for lunch. <laughs> How? How? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the diner. I'm hungry. What about me? <laughs> <laughs> now, you stick your big fat head in there. But, Jack, I've been hiding in here for three days. <laughs> now, look. You're supposed to pay all my expenses when we travel. <laughs> but, Dan, I did. I bought two tickets, one for me and one for you. Then so why do I have to hide? Because if the conductor sees you, the ticket won't be any good. You look over 12. <laughs> Get back in there. And shave. <laughs> always complaining. A lovely Pullman and always complaining. Oh, Mr. Benny, now that you're out, I can make up your birthday. Oh, no, 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 no. No, but the conductor told me to. I've got to make it up. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, but my, my son is still sleeping. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Benny, but uh, I've got to make it up. thyroid condition. <laughs> you see, Daddy, I told you it wouldn't work. Now you get it. <laughs> now look. Oh, Porter, by the way, uh, what's your what's your name? Uh, Rochester Van Jones. Rochester? Well, that's an unusual name. Were you born in Rochester? No, Syracuse. <laughs> and then why didn't they call you Syracuse? That's my brother's name. <laughs> Now, look, Roger. I've got a sister named Minneapolis. Oh, she was born in Minneapolis. No, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Why didn't they call her Pittsburgh? That's a man's name. <laughs> well, now, look, Roger. Now, there's eight more of us kids you want to go No, on. no. I don't <laughs> there's no use making a fuss about this thing. Let's keep this just between the two of us. No, but I can't do that, you see. That's the rules. Oh, rules, rules. Look when we get off the train, we'll be in Los Angeles pretty soon. I'll give you a nice gratuity. Gratuity? Yes. That means... Oh, I know what it means. <laughs> I'm just worried about your conception. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I don't report this to the conductor, I'll lose my job. Oh, for heaven's sake. Right He's right, Jack. He's right. You tried to smuggle me through here on a half fare ticket, you got caught with it, and now you have to face it. Oh, never mind. Stay in. How? 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 <laughs> You know, don't make a big fuss about this thing. You know, we'll just keep it, just keep it in between the two of us. Yeah, but, but if I do that, I'm liable to lose my job. You will? I know, but look at it. If we, I know, uh, when we came from Chicago, see, I didn't mind it. You know, we got from Chicago, but as long as we're, you know, we're nearly here, then we're all right. See, we can make it up then. You know, I can pay. Well, we'll be in Los Angeles as soon as we go through that next tunnel. We're one hour out. Well, that's what I mean. We're in the sea. We'll be in the tunnel pretty soon. Now, believe me, Rochester. Look, at it. don't say anything to him. About it, you see, and everything will work out just fine. Don't let the conductor know. We're in the tunnel now. Say, well, it might be a lot of fun putting one over on that old solid puss. Well, of course, of course it will. And look, at it. and we keep this just between ourselves. The deal, huh? Okay, Mr. Benny, it's a deal. All right, let's shake. All right. <laughs> You? Yes, me. The old sourpuss. Well, you see, I'm fired. Now get your things and get ready to leave. As for you, I'm taking this up with the station master as soon as we get in. You won't get off this train till you pay the full fare. Hmm. Hello, Sonny. Get into the 
Joyner. All right, go. <laughs> well, Rochester, I'm, I'm really terribly sorry about this whole thing. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Benny. I'll probably find another job. Of course, things are a little rough right now. Yeah, and I kind of feel responsible for this whole thing. It's my... Say, listen, how would you like to work for me? Work for you? Yes. You know, I, I've always wanted a butler. And you'll have an easy job. I mean, there'll be a lot of time on your hands. See, that sounds pretty good. I think I'd like that. All right, you're hired. Well, before I start to work, don't you think we ought to discuss money? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, what do you think would be a fair salary? Oh, I ain't gonna get that. Let's start someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, we understand each other already. We'll get along fine. Well, anyway, we'll be in Los Angeles in about ten minutes, so I'm going into the diner. Okay. What about me? <laughs> Dennis, get your head in there. They don't know about you yet. <laughs> How? How? If they ever find out that's Remley, I'm really in trouble. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment, but first, here's a word from cigarette smokers. Light up for lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up for lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. Why is it when folks are stepping out, you so often see Luckies going along? It's just that Luckies always taste better. That's because they're made of fine tobacco. Naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco that's toasted. That's right. It's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Next time you're going out, take a pack of Luckies along with you. You'll say they're the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Right now. Light up a lucky. It's light up time. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm certainly glad that Miss Churchill asked me how I discovered Rochester. All, if not, we'd have had a very short show. <laughs> I nearly forgot my lines in the middle. We'd have had a very long show. <laughs> but anyway, once again, I would like Miss Churchill to come out. Well, Jack, that was a very interesting story. It was. And it really is wonderful to think that Rochester's been with you 18 years. Yes, and he's been just wonderful working with me. But there's just something I, I didn't remember you telling him, how much salary you were going to pay him. Well, you know, 18 years ago, we haggled a little bit, and we finally settled it. Oh, when? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, I do want to thank you very, very much, Sarah, and I'm so glad we're going to be together in London, really. Oh, yes, I, I shall look forward to it enormously. Are, are you going to spend all, your, all of your time in England? No, no, no. I'll go to other places. I'll go to Paris, probably, and Rome and Madrid. Then I don't want to miss that wedding at Monaco. You know, <laughs> I'm going to that. Oh, did you receive an invitation from Prince Rainier? Well, not exactly, but when I made out the invitations, I saved one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Sarah. Thank you, Jackie. You know, I found out another thing about when you're appearing in England, uh, that, uh, you know, when you, you have to, you know, you're not permitted to bring your money back here. As a matter of fact, the last time I played in London, I had to leave my money over there, but I left it in a safe place. I buried it in Westminster Abbey. <laughs> You know, most tourists go around with cameras. I carry a shovel. <laughs> but as I said before, that uh, I'm not only going to, uh, uh, to London, I'm going to be in Paris and Rome. And I was going to Venice, too, because I, I love Venice, you know, with the 
beautiful watered streets and everything, but then I decided not to go because a few days ago we had Venice over here. <laughs> fortunately, I was very, very fortunate. I was the only one who lived in Beverly Hills who owned a gondola. <laughs> I had to sing a little, but it was fun. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, once and for all, I do want to apologize for the way I've been talking for years about Frank Remley and the boys in the orchestra. You know, I always accuse them of carousing around and drinking and carrying on. And believe me, I only do this for a gag. It's just a joke because they're a bunch of wonderful boys, real lovely family men, wonderful citizens, and really stalwart workers and in civic affairs, you know? <laughs> and, uh, it's a fine time for the drummer to fall off the stool. <laughs> All right, boys, pick them up. No medication this time. <laughs> See, during rehearsal, one of the rehearsals, he fell off the stool and all the rest of the musicians hollered, give him an MD, an MD. I found out later that meant a bottle of Mogan David. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday, watch Ant Southern. I'll be back in two weeks. Appearing on tonight's program are Roy Flynn, Will Wright, Benny Rubin, and George Comfort. Remember one week from tonight on this same station, be sure and watch Ann Southern and Private Secretary. Jack Benny's next television show will be in two weeks. Filter Talkers, the whole town's talking about filter tip tarryism because all the pleasure comes through. The taste is great. Yes, filter tip tarryism with the pearl gray activated charcoal filter smokes milder, smokes smoother, draws easier. Filter tip tarryism is the best in filtered smoking. Remember, all the pleasure comes through. The taste is great. The Jack Benny program has been brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. The Jack Benny program has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas. <laughs>